I'm ready. Black Enterprise. This is the tour closer. So uh, it's gonna be a good one. I think 1,500 people. Check, levels, 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 levels. Woo! I know you were hot, man. Yo, this is crazy. This is for the vlog. It's for the vlog one time. This tour has been crazy because I've hit a bunch of cities that I either have never been to or haven't been in a decade. And to have the kind of turnout that we've had, I think just speaks to, you know, when you're doing something that really resonates with people and they care about, it shows. So people ask me about growing their followings and they're worried about the tactics. They're worried about the tips and tricks and optimization, but they don't seem to understand that the most important thing is doing some shit that matters first. You want to grow your following? Do shit that matters. I'm just honored that they have any context, which just speaks to the power of social. I mean, if you would have asked me if a, you know, roomfuls of people in cities I've never been to would have any context, I'd be damned if I would have said yes. But. Here we are, a few years later. Woo! I'm ready. Are you? <laughs> All right, guys. Two minutes to game time. Listen, I remember doing talks when I would go in the room, and there were seven people there, literally. Different story these days. Why? Consistency. Let's hope it goes well. Hey, thank you, brother. Wow. Black. Black Enterprise. Sequoia Black is a wonderful Sequoia Black. Can you, guys, can you guys make some noise for her? I love this. I love this. I'm going to stand with you in a second, but I just feel like, like you guys are asleep right now. I'm, I'm upset. I'm upset. I'm upset. I'm on a tour right now across the Midwest. I done hit Pittsburgh, Detroit. Yesterday I was in Cleveland. This is the tour closer. So I'm gonna need you guys to give me some energy right now. There we go. Now one last thing that I'm gonna set my behind down. But this morning I read something uh, it was an article that said that poverty, on average, takes 20 years to get out of if everything goes right. You guys might have also heard the stat that the median net worth of a black family by 2050 is going to be net negative. And I read that stat and I said, they didn't ask me. Not on my watch. And the reason we're here is because not on our watch. Right? So if we're, if we're, interested, if we're interested in putting our money where our mouths are at, closing the equity gap, building up this, this equity, this bread, then I want you guys to make some noise right now, please. All right. I think in a similar way, I've stepped into this game and at first I was the tech entrepreneur and then I realized, hmm, okay, I'm not even really that good at tech if I'm, if I'm gonna be honest. Um, but what I can do is bring to the table a perspective that most of these folks that I sit down with at the boardroom, they never been, they never been there. And so once you start understanding that this game is highly contextualized, it's not about what works. So as you go around today in the conference looking for what works, it's not about that. It's about what works for you, right? It's about taking your DNA 
taking what you're good at, what your team's good at, and doubling down on that because the moment you play someone else's game, you lose. At some point, I discovered, okay, cool. Step one is getting your earning power up. You gotta get your earning power up. And I've discovered that you get your earning power up is directly reciprocal to how good you are, your damn skill. Your skill. Everyone's not gonna have the same skill. I happen to be good at this, so this is how I make bread. Matt Hubble is good on the camera, that's how he makes his bread. Savitri has a passion for not-for-profits, that's how she's building her company. Everyone here is their respective skill and that's what you use to build your income. My mom, maybe a year and a half into growing that second business company, not-for-profit, my mom asked me, she said, John, what do you have to show for the fact that you sold your business? And it still gives me chills because I had to look at her in the eyes and honestly, other than like a cool incubator, nothing. And it felt terrible. It still makes me feel terrible that in that moment I looked at her and I said nothing. And I made her resolve that day that if my mom ever asked me that question again, the answer would never be nothing. So then I learned, oh, okay, concentration of capital ebbs and flows. There's going to be periods where your bread's up. There's going to be periods where you're going through a dry spell. And unless you're a disciplined saver, which I would venture to say most people are not, then that cash is going to go. So if you're going to go broke on dumb shit, then you might as well take that capital and develop the discipline and redirect it into building equity and building assets. And there's a reason why if you study wealth, people park their cash in real estate. And nothing felt better. I told y'all my mom didn't have anything growing up. Nothing felt better than I saved up enough dough and I bought my first building. And I said, mama, we don't need a single family home. We got cash flow. Yes. Now we own an asset. My equity, i.e. cash, when you transfer your cash into an asset, it converts into equity. Different equity behaves differently. We talked about that. Startup equity has the potential to go like this or like this. Small business more like this. Real estate is stable, but the thing I like about real estate is that equity, is that principle is protected. It's growing slowly over time, and on top, it's shooting off cash flows. And to make matters more interesting, the bank has a very special relationship with real estate than it does with small businesses. When I was running my laundry business, we had contracts for $50,000 a month and they still wouldn't give me no loan for 50,000. I'm like, bro, what, what's going on? And I just under, I learned to understand that the bank, they just have their own risk profile. They don't know about laundry. They don't know about cosmetics. They don't know, they're not trying to get into all that. But what they do know if you have real estate is that if you don't make your payments, they at least have that asset, right? So now, my, now I'm walking you guys through my thought process and you guys can see my understanding has elevated beyond just, yo, I'm doing a startup. Once you start understanding on the macro, capital infusion, how it works, assets, uh, you know, banking, small business, venture, how it all fits together. Media is a massive machine that you can get working for you if you just create your own content instead of waiting for people to write about you. Once you can get all these gears and you can get them working for you, you're just a small cog and you'd be damned to think if you're gonna change the system, but if you can get it working in your favor, your likelihood of success is increased. So now I have this equity in this real estate and then I learned on top of that that the bank will now give me a loan based off of this asset that I have to buy another one. And I was like, bro, this is what, this is the information that has been reserved for the privileged for centuries. I wish you could zoom in and see these chills, man. Centuries. And the fact that I get to play a small part and come here and share some of this, like, have you guys ever come across a truth and you're like, yo, someone's gotta know. And you're just like, yo, I discovered this thing. Like, that's how I feel right now.
This it's just been two, three years that I've been on that. I've been starting companies for eight years. It's only been in the last two that I'm really starting to understand the kind of the equity piece on top for real. And I am so passionate about making sure that black and brown folks participate in the upside of their communities. Because I'll tell you what, I'm traveling, as I said, Detroit. I've been to a lot of places just in the past week, five cities, four days, and even just in general. There's a lot of communities that are popping right now, but you know what? It doesn't matter if you're not participating in the upside. These communities pop, and if you don't have equity, guess what? You're getting priced out. And you'll move to the outskirts, and guess what? The outskirts will pop, and guess what? If you don't have equity there, you're getting priced out. We're gonna end up in fucking Omaha. <laughs> so it's, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And if you don't got the bread alone, you can combine a few homies and put the equity piece up and understand that the bank loans you 80%. So that's the tip I'm on right now. When you get liquidity in the ecosystem, you can propagate that wealth. And so I, I set that context because I didn't want to go straight into, oh, well, we're a venture capitalist firm and we look for product market fit and market sizing. That's, this is deeper than that. It has to go deeper than that for us. Because you guys know the stats, 3%, three of all venture funding goes to women and minorities. Women and minorities receive 3% of venture capital. In 2017, $84 billion was invested into venture as a whole. In 2018, it's up to $134 billion. This is a mass, this is a growing asset class it's growing at a ridiculous pace. It's shaping the companies of the future. And you're telling me we get 3%, but we make 70% of the US population? I love when people approach me and they're like, yo, John, like, that's awesome. Like, I'm not on some other Teresa stuff. Like, that's a business case. I'm betting that we can make products that will speak to us better than someone from outside of our communities. And that's from capital. Context matters so much. It's gotten to the point for me now where I can step into a room and have the majority of the room or half of the room or shit, even any percentage of the room have context on, what, on who you are and what you do. Then the conversation is less introducing yourself and it's more about, yo, let's get to work. What can we do together? That's what I find so enriching, context. So we live in a world now where we're at a height of consuming peer-generated content. It's not even about quality anymore. In fact, stats suggest that if the video is too high quality, people tune out. My highest performing videos is this. And so if you're gonna be here all day, and by the way, I love consuming my peers' stuff because like, that's who I rock with really, is like my peers. My peers is who I have tremendous respect for and who we should all have tremendous respect for. So yeah, I'm supporting my homies, but I'll be damned if, not, if I'm not also gonna be a producer. And I think people get tripped up because they're like, yo, I don't know enough to produce. All you gotta do is share your journey. And if you stop front and alleviate this pressure to be a guru and just say, yo, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm on this journey, I'm gonna find out. Come learn through me, come learn with me. People are not after perfection, they love the process. And if you can deliver that process and if you can incorporate those dynamics that we just talked about, content, and you can pair it with whatever your hustle is, your, your venture gets amplified. It's the execution, which is the growing the business and can't be ignored, but it's also the storytelling. And they're two different skill sets, and you have to flex them both if you want to be good at it. So, clap it up. So this game is about leverage. And you either have it or you don't. Now, if you come from a zip code or a last name, then cool, you're born with leverage, use that. If not, for like 99% of us who aren't, then you have to create that leverage. For example, people only give a shit about what I have to say now because I have the show on Vice. 
Before then, it was because I had this podcast on Washington Post. Before then, I had this podcast on eBay. Before then, I had a meetup. Before the meetup, I had nothing. <laughs> right? And so it's like, can you, using whatever your interests are, skills, can you create the first, right? It's like you need a Trojan horse to get into the game. You use your skill to get into the game. And right now, content is an excellent way to do that. Why? being interviewed, i.e. see what's happening here, right? People love being interviewed. So if I were you, I would create a content series, a video podcast, not that expensive to put up, brand it, call it something cool, start reaching out to people in your, you know, in your desired market to be in, and you start having them on your show, and from that piece of content that you create with them, you create a bunch of different micro pieces of content, blog posts, tweets, what have you, you can take one 40 minute video and create 40 pieces of content. And now all of a sudden, you're disseminating information and when you put content out you allow people to develop an opinion about who you are and what you do all of a sudden you're creating this context and that's social capital over time if you're if you're foolish you cash it in for pennies if you're wise you build your social capital you never ask for favors you build it and eventually you get to the point where your social capital starts positioning you for opportunities that you wouldn't even have imagined that you could do when you started does that help? I don't avoid the calamity around me. I don't avoid the chaos. Like people, look, look guys, I don't know. There's a bunch of like, you know, really neatly packaged tips for how to deal with life. I'm not one of those people. Like for me, I'm, we're in the world that we're living in. For me, I didn't avoid when Nipsey Hussle got shot. I drew from that. Rest in peace. I didn't avoid that. You don't avoid what's going on in Sudan. You don't avoid what's going on in the news. You don't avoid the fact that undocumented immigrants are being treated like they're not even people. And that's how my, my parents came in, by the way. You don't avoid that. You draw from that. These are the issues that are pertinent and relevant and contextualized to our community. So if we tune it out, then who's gonna tune it in? We need to be building off of that, incorporating into our being, to our narrative, into how we message. That's what gives us the edge. People want to know if Queen City hustles. Let's two, three. Queen City hustles. Come on, baby. We brought the heat, baby. We brought the heat. We brought the heat. Yeah, feeling so good. Things like a muscle, man. You gotta flex it. All right, let's go. entrepreneur and venture capitalist John Henry hey guys thank you for having me of course so John in 60 seconds or less what advice would you give someone trying to seek funding from a VC super simple here look this comes down to two things execution and storytelling you can be really good at building a business and not have the skills to inspire confidence from an investor and or you could be good at storytelling and not have a business so in my opinion, you need to be developing your ability to build a business, A, and then B, learn the nuance of storytelling to investors, learn to communicate the grand vision, but also be self-awareness to understand the micro. This is a delicate game, it's a delicate dance, but with enough reps, and by the way, it takes years, you'll get there and you'll be able to race. There you go. <laughs> yes, she was so hype. Bro, how are you, man? Mike, I'm doing good. Damn, I'm nervous as fuck. Well, nah, my name's Earl Spurrier. Nice to meet you. Earl? Damn. Nice yeah, to meet you, nice bro. To meet you. Damn. 
It's, it's all good, bro. It's crazy you're a person. Hug. Damn. You are. Um, how are you going to go about living your life and yeah. actually executing on that? Yeah. I think it was just more organic than that, you know? I think, like, because we live now in a, you know, in an era where it's like 60 second pieces of content, like yeah. we're consuming things in the micro, but really like there's a lot more context and detail and nuance that goes into all this stuff. And I would say, man, there's not really like a switch that you flip. It's more an organic process. It's more like, all right, bet. Like, let me tune out of John's content, Gary's content, Gerard. Let me tune out of all that for a minute. Like, you know what I'm saying? And the more you assess within yourself where it is that you feel you're at, honestly, yeah. and no one knows your situation better than you, right? And so like you read all these tips and stuff, but they're not gonna be able to like specifically apply. Yeah. So you know within your life right now, literally, the next three to six months, like what you feel you should be focusing on. Yeah. And don't ever feel like, you know, you read someone else's story and you're like, dang, I should be focusing on something else. I think there's that temptation. Yeah. I feel it's like, yo, all right, what opportunity do I have right in front of me right now? And how can I make sure that I maximize that in the best way? Yeah. And when you focus on the step that's right in front of you, that's what I was talking about, treating that baby step with respect, yeah. then it builds up. And then you get to the point where you're really in tune, but you don't ever just flip the switch and get there. It starts small, you know? Everybody wanted to know something specific about you that you can't find anywhere that is close and near to your heart. What would it be? Um, probably that, uh, let's see, few things. Uh, love smoking cigars, drinking Japanese whiskey. Oh, okay. Love being dressed in linens with a nice view somewhere in Miami. Um, and also, I was a jazz musician, professional jazz musician for years and years before I became an entrepreneur. Oh, wow, music. Oh my gosh. So Only way to accelerate your growth mm -hmm. is to accelerate the amount of people who know about you. Right? Yeah. And there's a number of ways you can do that. Yeah. You can either, if you got bread, pay for ads, mm -hmm. billboards, and da da da. Mm -hmm. Now, that's typically not what a startup has a lot of. Right. And so, what you have to do, if you want more eyeballs mm -hmm. on, on what your product is, mm -hmm. is you gotta be doing more of this. Oh. <laughs> right? Because the more you do mm -hmm. of this and the more you put it out there, right. the more you increase the likelihood that someone who discovers you right. is gonna buy from you. Contextual to our generation, it's gotta be this. Yeah. That's how you can take one piece of art and make sure a thousand people see it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so, so the, like the, more, the more you're capturing what you care about and putting it in front of people who could potentially also care about it, yeah. the more you're gonna increase your top of funnel. You know what I'm saying? You go from 100 people to 500 people now, but a thousand people. And it's not enough to just do Great job. Thank you Fantastic. so much, brother. Thank you so much. Hey, it's not enough to um, just, you know, do it one off. You know, that, and, that, and that's where a lot of people go wrong. Like, they'll try and do one video and be like, yo, it didn't work. It takes a strategy. It's, you know, it's ongoing efforts. It's over-indexing. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's the details. So it's, it's, you know, it's both interviewing the artist, but also sharing where you draw inspiration, but sharing the art itself. And, you know, you layer all those and you do it consistently over time and that audience grows. That's cool. I already left there. Uh, oh, you did? I okay. Western, going full ride scholarship. Congratulations. And I want to know how I can immerse myself in this, this ecosystem. I'm going to things like this. You know how already. you do it? But beyond things like this, yeah. you go on twitter.com slash search, yeah. right? The search bar of Twitter and you jump into any and every one of these hashtags. So you don't got to physically be at the conference to be at the conference. That's right, that's right. If I wasn't here, I would literally type in hashtag Q, you know, BE in the QC yeah. and jump in and literally you, the, auto, the first thing that's going to load is the top tweets. Yeah. Okay. I'd switch it from top to all tweets yep. uh -huh. or latest tweets. Okay. And then once I'm there, I literally will go through and manually press like and someone says, yo, this conference is lit. Be like, yo, I know this is awesome. Or like, yo, I miss it this year, but I catch you next time. Okay. And go through and manually yeah, over right. index. And if you do that for all the pop-up conferences, all the, you know, happening things, right. you're all of a sudden, that's the nuance. Mm. When people start knowing you. And then if you it's pair that, capital. if you pair that with you creating your own content, so by the time you ping them, they come to you and now they're in your funnel and then they start discovering your content, developing an opinion about who you are. Okay. 
then the end result is they know you, they, they like you, they trust you, that's right. brand. And that's how you get into the best deals. And that's how you get the best investors. And that's how you develop opportunity. What more could we do, in addition to being patient, because right. some of it's gonna have to happen without us, um, in terms of content creation, could yep. we do to let people know this so, is here? So here's, so here's the reality, right, mm -hmm. about the space that you're operating in. Yep. You're looking to pioneer, okay? When you pioneer, as you found, you have to wait and also play your part in growing the market, mm -hmm. yep. right? And so there's a very real long tail that exists. Now, what happens if the market for some reason doesn't go your way, then you've invested the time and you didn't get much upside. Now, the opposite case, what happens when you're leading this market and, and the general market is behind you and then it comes your way, you get the lift, and you're now leading a market that all of a sudden people care about and you've been an established leader, that's when you get the upside. Absolutely. The thing is that that has to be balanced with, like you said, the micro, mm -hmm. right? And the reality is that, you know, it's easier to make money short term when you go for already existing industries. Because like when I started my dry cleaner, I didn't have to convince anyone that dry cleaning worked, I just had to convince them to go with me, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, because the value is so, there. And that's right. Trying to create. Like the perceived value doesn't exist. That's right. Even though the value does. That's the right. The perceived value doesn't. Yep. Yeah. So you guys just have to develop Run. for the vlog. Full circle. Drew, this is Drew. You guys got to check him out, man. BYOB. I already know you guys know about BYOB, but I haven't had the opportunity to grace a stage yet. So we're going to fix that effective this vlog. So we're going to do something cool here. Ready? Okay. We're going to do something cool here. What are we going to do? All right, all right. Next year, when we hit the BYOB stage, we're going to put on the screen this exact moment, all right? Today is, uh, what's today's date? Today is 20th. Thursday, June 20th, 1047 AM. All right, I'm gonna snap my fingers and we're gonna go from this video to live on the stage. Snap. Oh, hey, that's gonna that? be <laughs> All right, vlog. JH Midwest Tour has come to a close. It's been real. Thank you, Detroit Demo Day. Thank you, Detroit Startup Week. Thank you, uh, Cleveland Startup Scale Up. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you, Black Enterprise. I appreciate all you guys. The Queen City, you've been real. And it's, it's an honor, it's really humbling um, that you guys are watching along, for real, for real. You know, it means the world. And again, and I say this a lot, but this ain't, this ain't some like, yo, you know, I'm so much farther ahead type of thing. This is like, yo, we're building from the ground up. We're learning real time. And what I come here to share is exactly what I'm picking up from you guys, real-time market feedback. So we're gonna be in this for a long, long time, and I appreciate you guys. Till next time.